point, it feels like he's untouchable. Yeah. He just he just and and he's gonna call a shot now. I mean, I can't. I he can't keeps saying imagine. He's a crazy. He's, he's, he's like he's he's just like <laughs> in his own world. He's like. I'm a free agent. And it's like he, <laughs> he was, was a little drunk. Going, I think at that point fuck? he was a little drunk off the notorious whiskey that he yeah. made. He's got his own whiskey though. And then they're asking, they're asking Dana White like, "Hey, is he gonna box again? No, he's not gonna box again." And then it's like, "Is he gonna go into acting? No, he's not gonna go into acting. He's just gonna fight in the UFC." And then it's like Connor's like, "I'm a Dana's free agent." like, "I hope." Who wants to fight me? <laughs> Dana's yeah. like, "I hope." Movie roles. Dana's like, "I love what he did, but I want him back in the UFC." But it's gonna cost him. I mean, how can you tell him, right? How can you tell Connor, "Come back, Connor." Give you a base purse of seven, ten million. When he just made thirty or a hundred, how how do you get him back to the UFC uh, when he just fought under those terms? Yeah, Who because is- it's dangerous to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov. It's dangerous to fight Tony Ferguson. Yeah, those are tough matchups for him. Just- for a third of the money, a fourth of the money. Yeah, come on, man. Well, he's only had one fight. He's only had one fight. Where the other person was close to his size, and that was Max Holloway height. Yep. He, the, one of the most amazing things he's done is he's found a way to always. It's not like he picked them because they were in front of him, but he's always managed to fight guys that are physically a lot smaller than him. And so, so somehow he goes in, and he's like, <laughs> "If you if you just if you just close your eyes and you just listen to some things he says, you're like, this guy's just like the bully, right? He's the schoolyard bully." That everyone gets bullied, but he somehow spun the narrative that he was the poor little skinny fucker that was bullied by the kids in Ireland, and now he's just going out here and he's fighting this insurmountable things and he's overcoming these odds. It's like, but then you look at it and you're like, what the hell? How does he? He keeps getting to fight these guys that are smaller, and it's not like Diaz. He, he fought Diaz. Well, Diaz, Diaz yeah. is bigger, but like, but then that they said he was 300 pounds and seven feet tall. But it's like, <laughs> and it's not like he's doing it on purpose, right? Because Eddie Alvarez just happened to become the lightweight champion at the I think, perfect I think time Connor, for Connor. I think Connor, I think there has been some uh some things that have happened for him that have made for good matchups. Now, the reality of the situation is he doesn't control that Eddie Alvarez beats Hoffman Dos Anjos. Yeah, like he was gonna fight whoever, but it helped he him. He was gonna that, beat Dos Anjos. Yeah. Watching now, like watching him now. Yeah. At first I was like, oh my goodness. After I saw Dos Anjos do what he did to Anthony Pettis, I was like, there's no way Connor beats him. Connor was going to demolish Rafael Dos Anjos in that fight. And I like Dos Anjos, but yeah. after watching what Tony Ferguson did to him, he was cutting too much weight to get to 55. He's better at 70. But Connor is what would have been a nightmare for him. Yeah, but think there about, aren't many bad matchups for him. But think about like when Connor fought when Connor fought Aldo, the size difference yep. was about the same as when Connor fought Nate. And you look at how it was billed, was like, I mean, obviously Aldo's Aldo. So Connor's fighting this legend. It was never like, well, he's a lot bigger than him. You know, it no. was like, well, he's he's a lot less experienced. Like this isn't, is he, if, he, if he's going to knock off one of the Mount Rushmore of MMA. And then. Aldo hadn't lost in 10 years, Nick. Yeah. Which is, and then he goes, but then he goes and fights Nate. And, and it's like, and Nate's like, a, you know, top five, ten. I mean, depending on the night, he's as good as anyone. But on other nights, he's, you know you know maybe a top five top ten guy instead of a top one or two but yeah. somehow he connor's just masterful at the narrative he gets the narrative to where he's fighting a 170 pounder who probably can barely make 170 pounds and nate's sitting there going dude i fought every fucking fight at 155 and i you know i fought like two <laughs> fights at 170 what the fuck and hey, God, uh, it's, it's it's amazing like how he how he just i don't know if he thinks all these things through or i got to spend a decent amount of time with him when we sponsored him and he was like, it just feels like he probably just sits there and just thinks about everything instead of, like, he just saw it as like, oh, fighting is one part of what I got to do. But yeah. the opportunity is, and, but then, and then so, again, to his credit, to think all of it, then do it all. And then, it, you know, you can say what you want. Oh, that guy, you know, oh, you fought a guy that was small. Oh, you know, dude, he's still, he's still taking out everyone in front of him whenever he's, whenever he's had a chance. So it's, uh, and, it's amazing. And look. You know why Connor's special and why Connor has received the amount of praise and the amount of success that he's had? Because Connor was not afraid to be an idiot. Imagine, yeah. Dennis, if when he started talking all this stuff, if he just got beat right away and everybody put him in his place. Like some people thought he would. Yeah. They said he couldn't fight a wrestler and he beat Chad Mendez. They said, well, there's no way he's beating Aldo. They gave him an interim title just to make him the champ. Starch is Aldo in 13 seconds. Yeah. That it was, was like, well, like, oh, there's no way he's going to win the 155-pound title. Yeah. 
demolishes Eddie, uh, hits him with the death punch. Every time he hit Eddie Alvarez, Eddie Alvarez fell down. But he always said it. Yeah. It's like when you start to talk like that, if you don't back it up, people will laugh at you because they're waiting for your fall. Yeah. And Connor just never fell. And he never, he's never given any indication that he doesn't believe it. Like, he's not like he's, they're not like, it doesn't look like someone's up there going, <clears throat> oh, he's just talking shit because someone told him, hey, talk shit. It just looks like, like, I mean, there was a, I don't know if it was Errol Hawani. Someone had a thing that was like, this is a weird fight. If you go watch Connor and his guys train, he doesn't have any boxing guys in there. <laughs> and they are absolutely baffled why the world doesn't see this as, like, just easy fight and, like, lopsided in his favor. Like, they, they don't even... They don't even understand what, people like him. why it wouldn't be easy for him. And people then the whole like rest him. of the world thinks, like, this is going to be impossible. But it's like that crazy, you know, that self-belief of, like... Just, him and his people believe. Amazing. And also, the reason the general public doesn't question him is because they like him. Once you yeah. get the fans on your side and they believe what you're selling, they'll follow you to the ends of the earth, man. I'm telling you. I remember watching... Arturo Gotti go to war with Mickey Ward over and over. And then he he became a big HBO guy. And then HBO matched him up with Floyd. And uh, people started going, well, he's going to beat Floyd Mayweather. And I'm like, he's not. He just went tooth and nails with Mickey Ward, who is a quarter of the fighter that Floyd Mayweather is. But people believed, because people believed in Arturo Gotti. And I think that's what you have in Connor. He has managed to make people believe in him, and they follow him blindly, man. Look yeah. at my boy. My boy's behind me. You know what? what uh, <coughs> 30 what, minutes, Paul. What that reminds me of is I've always thought, like, you know, the the if there's an issue with the UFC, the issue is, so I'll admit, I discovered UFC on tough one, right? Like, I was watching The Contender, and then I had a buddy who was like, you like The Contender, you gotta see this tough one. I was living in Vegas, and I was like, what's that? He's like, oh, it's this Ultimate Fighter show. The finale's tonight. They're showing the whole thing. And I sat there, and I watched every episode, and then I watched the live finale of uh, Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonner. You were in like, love. I was like, holy shit. But what happened <laughs> from that is, like, like, it was a manageable amount of guys to keep track of for me, right? I was new coming into it, and it's like, oh, I want to see Kashyyyk fight Lieben. I don't fucking care if they're the two best welterweights in the world. I just want to see them fight each other. And like, and that was what it was. That was kind of what it reminded me with uh, Mayweather and McGregor. Is like, I think one of the commentators is like, look, this is not the, this is not a Floyd Mayweather fight we're used to where it's like the most technically, like the best display of boxing ever. And obviously with Conor in here, it's not, you know, world-class boxing. But it's a hell of an entertaining fight, and it was like, dude, like, you know, it's 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 hard because you want people to do, but like, I feel like that's what we need more of. Where it's like, I mean, a belt matters, but like, we want to see people we know fight each other so that we care one way or the other. I mean, because it's Connor also, yeah. people love him, but then people, because he's so brash, they want to see him lose, and he just realizes I don't care. Like, that's more people watching me. So you need like that's that's a little bit. What's there's so many guys now that it's hard to keep track of. It's hard to figure out like. Who doesn't like who? Because they call each other out, and we don't hear from them for another nine months. There's not; they don't really tell us about the guys anymore. It, it just, moves too fast. It moves really fast, right? So, do they can drop it down right now to ten fight? guys per weight class? They just Was that? Got, they, I mean, they shouldn't do this because a lot of fighters obviously would be unemployed. But from as a fan, if they said, "Hey, we're gonna have twelve guys per weight class," that's it for next year, and the only way you get in is when one guy gets out. We'll we'll drop a couple if they're not performing, and you would know. That doesn't every, work, Nick. We'd have to fight every month. Why? Because 12 guys in a weight class? Well, how many would that be? Let's see. That'd be five, <laughs> fights, two, Nick. five fights a year. <laughs> well, that's only seven weight classes. What are you trying to do, bud? That's that's, some, that's only 84 guys on the roster. Well, then you do now, how many fights you do, how many fights do we need? You guys fight if they have Nick, fights there three are times 20, a year. There are 13 fights a night in the UFC. Well, we don't need 13 fights, first of all. We need about, <laughs> we could get away with like seven or eight. You do like the Russians, you know, do group fighting and then, you know. Nick yeah. is out of his mind. Well, what are the first ones for? Like the first ones are for the people in the arena to see. Like, I mean, like we should have less fights and we should know more about the guys because a fight is a fight. It doesn't matter. Like if you go watch basketball, right? You can't, you can't say, hey, I'm going to start a, I'm going to start a beer league basketball and I'm going to put it on TV because everyone will be like, dude, uh, like the skill level is so much different than the best. And like, it's just so sloppy. But a fight, there's obviously a drop-off between the best fighters in the world and, like, 
two guys fighting in a parking lot, but like huh? it's still you still can't turn away when two guys are fighting in the parking lot, especially no. if you know especially if you know one of them. <laughs> especially if you're driving them home. Yeah. yeah. I mean you I might watch. you know if I know one of them as I'm running away, I might be looking over my shoulder. <laughs> what the fuck? I hope he doesn't I hope he wasn't counting on me to back him up. But the yeah. early fights are for uh their families. A lot of people's families. That's who's in the arena early. But well, these guys that you watch in the early fights, they become stars. I remember watching Stipe Miocic uh, as as a curtain jerk. I remember when Kane fought Ben Rothwell, the very first fight of the night was Shale Sonnen. You know, so... Yeah, why, can't uh, they have, why can't they have, like, promotion relegation like soccer? Why can't they have a minor league, and then the champion <laughs> of the minor league gets to... The guy gets... You know, a couple guys fall down, a couple guys go up. I just think they got to do a better job of, like... Uh, Building stars like, like they used to, yeah, and, and, because and like, well, you you know when you see, you know how you see that at its at, at its best is that now, pay per view main events have to be championships. Before you used to get those fights where there was no title on the line, and two guys were main eventing pay per views because they were just draws and stars, yeah. Even though they weren't champions, but nowadays, uh, it's hard to do that because because of of, of so much content and so many fights. Yeah. So but, so it's a. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it it's be- different. It's a different time, but I mean, you got to understand that e- e- you got to understand that even boxing now is starting to flood the market with uh, with fights because um because because they need content. Uh, stations need content, and uh, you have to give out li- live live sports is the biggest draw in the world. You know, so when it, when it, when a company can get live sports. They go crazy. So for 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 the for Fox, the UFC is golden. There's so much content the UFC pushes out. Fox loves it. Now with the PBC boxing, you have you ever heard of Al Heyman? Yeah. Look up Al Heyman on the internet. There's one photo of Al Heyman ever. He never was photographed. But then Saturday, Floyd hugged him, and they actually showed him on video. It's the first time Floyd Mayweather, uh, uh, Adrian Broner. All these guys that he managed, he's controlled boxing for 10 years, but never is videoed. But this weekend, he lets himself be videoed. Now, you saw Floyd kind of wave at him like, no, 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 turn the cameras off. But uh, that never happened with him before. Nick, I'm going to send you a video here, and you'll get to see it. But I, I don't understand what was going on with Heyman, why he allowed for him to be filmed like that, because he never does, man. Al Heyman is a... Uh, you know what else is crazy? Speaking of He's never, no one's ever bet on Floyd and lost. Oh, that's true. Uh, that's crazy. Well, let's finish. So, so for my bet, if, if we if we wanted him just to win no matter what, it was minus four fifty. So, which betting tricks you into? So we took minus two seventy five, and we said, forget it, we'll give up the decision. But like, if you just bet on Floyd, anyone in the whole world that's ever bet on Floyd to win never in the last lost. twenty years has never lost. If you bet him straight, if though. you bet him straight to it, yeah. not if you yeah, if you bet him straight, yeah. But it was a pretty safe bet. Even-